Hey there, everyone. Welcome to Connection Points. Pastor Dennis with you, and we're going to study <clears throat> um, John chapter 12, the, the the remaining verses in John chapter 12. Uh, we're going to study together now uh, this week and, and just look at um, some events that happen leading up to uh, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. The, the Gospel of John uh, spends a lot of time on this last few uh, weeks, these last few days of Jesus' uh, life before uh, the death, burial, and resurrection and and after. And so we're just going to work through that uh, a little bit at a time, not in any real big hurry, um, because really what I want to do is, is use this scripture uh, in small pieces to just help us think through that moment and that time that impacted all of humanity forever and um as we as we understand that as we as we meditate on that and think about that it i hope will change the way that we that we perceive or the way that we value this time in in human history and in in the life of christ and and how it impacts our lives so in john chapter 12 uh, we're going to pick up in verse 20 is where we left off. It says, Now there were some Jews among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was with, um, who was from Bethsheba in Galilee, Bethsaida, I'm sorry, Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request, Sir, they said, We would like to see Jesus. Philip went to uh, tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. So Jesus is uh, at this festival, and you know he's, he's built quite a reputation at this point um, by doing the the miracle signs and wonders that he has done. That word has passed uh, around throughout that society, and and so there are some Greeks here that are wanting to see Jesus. Um, they are, you know, probably um, God fearing Greeks. They're 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 there to worship and. And they're they're searching and they're and they're looking and they've heard about this one called Jesus and and they want to speak to him. So in verse twenty three, it says Jesus replied, "The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it." while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Now, <clears throat> this is almost like a proverb that Jesus is speaking here, but he's but it's also uh, a, a prophecy, and he's talking about himself he's talking about his life that he's about to lay down and and that uh, his his death that is that is coming that he is fully aware of God Jesus was not surprised about his death he knew it was coming he knew that's why he came he gave it willingly it wasn't taken from him it wasn't forced it was all according to the plan of God the scripture is very clear about that. But Jesus is giving us a little deeper insight into what's happening here. And I think it's interesting that he ties these two things together. The Greeks are coming to want to talk to him. And then Jesus tells this little proverb or parable, um, not a parable necessarily, but a, a metaphor uh, that he's using. And, and he says, it, it's, time for, it's time for me to be glorified. In other words, it's time for me to do what I've come here to do, to bring glory to God and to, and to be released from this, this world. And so he says, very truly, I tell you, a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies. He's referring to himself there that he is one kernel, one person that is going to die, and, and that death is going to create a tremendous reproduction and these greek people that are being drawn to him right now is a representative they represent the reproduction that's about to happen because from the jewish perspective the only person that the messiah was really for 
were for the Jews. And when when he introduces these Greeks that are coming, these are Gentiles that are coming looking for Jesus, and it and it he uses that to spark a a, a revelation that this what I'm about to do is not just for the Jews; it is for the Gentiles as well. It is for all people. And if one dies, then it will reproduce in a tremendous harvest. And that harvest is represented by all people, not just one group of people. And so it, then he then he gets into what that's going to look like. It, it, when we follow Christ in verse 25, very, very famous, um, common, commonly referred to scripture here, he says, anyone who loves who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Now, let me explain something about that. He's not saying to be living in self-loathing or or in um, you know in a in a state of hating yourself and hating your life and and um, all of, that's that's not what it means. When he says this, what he what he means here is that in comparison to the life that we get to live in him, service to him, serving him, that comparison is like love and hate. It is that drastic apart from each other that I don't want to love my life here on this earth. In other words, I don't want to um, worship the things that I do here on this earth in exchange for my opportunity to worship him through giving my life to him and saying, not my will, but yours be done. That's how we give our lives to Christ. We give our lives to Christ by not by killing ourselves or hurting ourselves or, or living in a hole somewhere or anything like that. It's by changing, trading my will for God's will and simply saying, I no longer lived. It's Christ that lives in me. Whatever you want to do through me, Lord, I am yours. My life belongs to you. That's what a true servant does. A servant lives for his master, and that's and that's what it means, is that we are living according to God's will, for his will, and according to his purpose. And 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 he says, if we do that, then that's how we demonstrate our love by obeying his his will and his words. And he says in verse 26, whoever serves me must follow me. In other words, they must do what I've done. They must continue on the mission that I am that I am on. The thing that I do, that's what we that's what the church is here to do. The church is not here to make up and create our own agenda and do our own thing. The church is here to do what Jesus did and to continue on what Jesus was doing. And and so if we if we look at what Jesus was doing, what was he doing? He was healing the sick. He was raising the dead. He was casting out demons. He was um, he was bringing people to salvation. He was giving. He was showing compassion uh, to others. He was pouring out grace to others. He he was leading others uh, out of their bondage and into freedom. These are the things that the church is to be doing. And and if we're doing something else, then we're on then we're on a different agenda than what Jesus has done. And therefore, we're not serving our master. We're serving ourselves and we're serving our own agenda. And that's just not that's just not what we're here for as the body of Christ. And unfortunately, we can get that reputation if we're not careful because we, we tend to do that sometimes. And so in, in verse 26, he goes on, he says, whoever serves me must follow me and where I am, my servant also will be. We will be with Jesus when we're following him, when we're doing his will, when we're accomplishing his work. And he says, my father will honor the one who serves me. It, it reminds me of the Great Commission, where he says at the end of the Great Commission, and I will be with them always to the end of the earth. Now, that promise comes at the end of a commandment, right? Go into all the world. But uh, that that go into all the world and sharing Christ with with others, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them everything I've commanded you to do. These are commands that we are given to do, and when we are doing what He has commanded us to do, He is with us always. 
to the very end of the earth. That that promise at the end comes when we fulfill the commandment. Are we doing what Jesus told us to do? Are we where Jesus is? And, and if we are, then we have that promise. So let's pray together. Father, we just thank you that we that we get the invitation to be with you, to obey you and to follow you, to lay our lives down so that you can live through us and accomplish your will and your purpose. And, and through that, our lives will mean so much more. And so we're just thankful, Lord, to be able to be yours and to be able to be called by your name to do your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for being with me, everyone. We'll see you soon.